The word is out among convicts. The one place you don't want to go is Skeleton Bay. That's what the inmates there call Pelican Bay State Prison in California. And you sure don't want to end up in the security housing unit there, known as the SHU, the toughest maximum security prison in the United States. The state of California that runs it proudly proclaims it's the wave of the future, designed to isolate prisoners who they insist are out of control, too violent, too unpredictable to be housed with the run-of-the-mill murderers and rapists. But to the men who are locked up there, especially in its shoe, Pelican Bay is simply torture, a living hell where inmates are brutalized and sometimes driven insane. Behind this razor wire is the infamous shoe at Pelican Bay, its security housing unit, windowless, high-tech, silent, grim, concrete bunkers. Pelican Bay's shoe is inside Pelican Bay State Prison, with 1,500 inmates, incorrigible, sent here from California's other prisons to isolate them. And they do hard time here in the shoe. Time here is like hard time in no other prison. James Gomez is director of the California Department of Corrections, the man in charge of all of California's prisons. He says Pelican Bay's shoe is reserved for inmates who commit crimes while they are in prison. If you commit five murders on the outside, you don't go to Pelican Bay. If you commit 10 murders on the outside, uh, you do not go to Pelican Bay. If you stab staff and you stab other inmates, you go to Pelican Bay. What Pelican Bay is for is to isolate those individuals who come into the prison system and cannot behave within the prison system. Built at a cost of a quarter billion dollars, Pelican Bay was designed as a massive automated isolation unit using state-of-the-art technology. Inside the shoe, no bars, but specially designed steel doors. No direct sunlight ever, and no direct contact with another inmate. For 22 and a half hours a day, inmates are kept in their cells. And for 24 hours a day, the inmates are under the control of heavily armed guards. Lieutenant Al Dinas is in charge of press and public affairs at Pelican Bay. He took us on a tour. This is not for uh, bullets. This no, is for... it's not. It's the stuff penetrating type objects like spears, knives, darts. The shoe consists of sections. Each section has a 500 foot long concrete corridor. You have three cell blocks on the left and three cell blocks uh, on the right. Wait a minute. What are you saying? People live behind these walls? Yes. I would say approximately 550 to 600 inmates. Behind these gray walls. Right. Front door, please. As we said, there are no windows and no direct sunlight inside Pelican Bay's shoe. Skylights in the pods let light come in down into the pod area that filters through our, our doors into the cells. I don't know why I feel that it looks a little bit like a spaceship or something. I don't know. Or a space station. This is the design. This is what we call a pod. Every pod is a small self-contained unit with eight cells on two tiers. Can we go in there? No, we cannot. We do not go inside the pod areas. Because? Safety and security. We do not let anybody in there but our staff. These pictures from inside the pods were provided to us by the California Department of Corrections. For an hour and a half a day, an inmate is allowed out to shower and exercise in a 12 foot by 28 foot concrete pen, which is connected to the pod. They're under constant video surveillance monitored by the guards. Guards who can look into every pod and who remotely control every cell door. Unlike other prisons, at Pelican Bay, security is so tight in the shoe that any job involving contact with an inmate, like serving them their meals in their cells, is done by the guards. What we do is we ensure that our officers do it. That way there's no chance of either contraband, narcotics, weapon stocks, or even weapons being passed down into the units. Always handcuffed and chained together when they're outside the pod, inmates are allowed weekend visits, still in handcuffs. And those visits are rare because 60% of the inmates are from Southern California, 800 miles to the south. They also get a weekly visit to the law library required by the U.S. Supreme Court. These law library visits enable inmates to work on their legal appeals and the thousands of complaints they file about life in Pelican Bay. What puts you in this building is an act you have committed within the Department of Corrections. Like? It's an act of violence, being caught with weapons, being caught running narcotics, being designated as a prison gang leader or member. That will bring you to this building. Uh, it's not what you've done on the streets. The man in this holding cell outside of his pod is Todd Ashker. Ashker is in prison for murder. 
I didn't even uh, consciously know I was stabbing him because uh, I was just trying to get, the guy just kept coming at me. Todd Asker, according to the Department of Corrections, is a member of a white racist gang, the Aryan Brotherhood. He was sent to the Pelican Bay Shoe because he assaulted a guard and killed another inmate. I killed the dude, right? But it was in self-defense. Why'd you kill the guy? The guy wanted me to give him some money and all this. He felt I owed him, right? And uh, I didn't feel I owed him nothing. So you so killed him? They said I stabbed him numerous times. Assault a guard? Yeah, they had a few assaults on the guards. Uh, possession of uh, inmate weapons, uh, assaults on inmates, things like that. There is no question that many of the inmates in Pelican Bay Zoo are violent or that they are gang members. And many convicts and correctional officers in California's prisons have told us that segregating them has, in fact, lowered the level of violence among the rest of California's prison population. But there are disturbing allegations and a growing controversy about abuses in Pelican Bay Prison and its security housing unit. Allegations that are about to be played out in federal court in San Francisco in a massive class action civil rights suit in which inmates are alleging that they are brutalized and sometimes driven insane in the shoe, and that some were sent there in the first place because they were mentally ill. A lot of the people who end up in Pelican Bay Shoe are the last people who ought to go there. Dr. Stuart Gracian is a professor of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. He is an expert on the effects of isolation and solitary confinement. Dr. Gracian interviewed scores of inmates in the Pelican Bay Shoe, and he says that over a third are psychotic. We're talking about people who have acute emergent psychiatric needs, who should be in a hospital and being seen on an hourly or every two-hour basis. Dr. Gracian went to Pelican Bay to investigate the psychiatric care at the prison because he's preparing to testify as an expert witness for the inmates in their lawsuit against the California Department of Corrections, the CDC. The CDC tries to create an impression that they're dealing with the incorrigibles, the kind of James Cagney of the prison population. What they're often dealing with is the wretched of the earth, people who are mentally retarded, mentally ill. Locofora Contreras is a transsexual confined to the shoe. This is like a modern dungeon, you know, 20th century dungeon, you know, high-tech dungeon, with all these little techniques to bend our minds, to break us. And it worked on me. In December, I tried to commit suicide. I jumped off the second tier because they missed my meal again. James Moore, who has brain damage, was in the shoes suffering from seizures and was given the wrong medication. I started having delusions, you know, illusions were coming out of the walls, and I was starting having really bad things. And what kind of treatment did Moore receive then? He says a team of officers came in to extract him from his cell. When they go in, they have helmets, they got shields, they got towels, they got tasers, they got bulletproof vests on, they got combat boots on, they got uh, steel batons, and they come in and they beat the shit out of you, man. One of the really tragic parts of this is that there are treatments for these kinds of conditions. Many of these people have minimal brain damage. Many of them would do extre extremely well with anticonvulsive medications, mood stabilizing medications, lithium. Many of the people who end up in Pelican Bay Shoe are precisely those people who need that kind of treatment and would do well with it. But instead, once they're in that criminal justice system, their behavior is viewed as criminal behavior to be punished. And they get punished and they get sicker and they become more violent, more out of control. Do they mix with each other, the, all the guys in this pod? No, they do not. Any communication they have is through the doors. If they come out of their pods, they will come in contact with no other inmate. They can talk, but they have no physical contact. Good God. And, and, and this can go on for years in here? Uh, depending on the circumstances of the case, it could go on for years. There's an eerie quality here, Al. It's different from when you get when you walk into most prisons, the old, the old prisons. You don't have the yelling and the screaming. Right. It's, it's very quiet. What goes on inside those cells? What goes on inside the minds of these people in there? I mean, in this silent, otherworldly, atmosphere. People describe the walls of their cells start to move in and out. Lights start becoming brighter and duller. And there's more. People who are smearing themselves with their own feces, drinking out of their toilet bowl, eating their feces. Even people are eating themselves. 
some people into will become uh, howling, violent, agitated, out of control. A good example is the prisoner who describes, he hears the faucet dripping, and over time the dripping gets louder and louder and louder, and then he can't stand it, and it starts to drive him out of his mind. You make it sound, Dr. Grassian, like torture. The results are torture. They're mental torture. I mean, it, in some ways, it, it feels to me ludicrous that we have these debates about capital punishment when what happens at a place like Pelican Bay Shoe is a form of punishment that's uh, far more egregious. They say I have some assaults of spitting, uh, kicking. That was basically it. A guard, prison guard. Von Dorch, a 28-year-old car thief, was sent to the Pelican Bay Shoe for fighting with other inmates and assaults on staff. After nine months, Dorch, who had no prior history of mental illness, deteriorated. He became psychotic, bit a correction officer, insisted he was a killer bee, and began to smear feces and urine on his body. Dorch, another guy I'm talking about? Yes. Mr. Dorch had speared fe fecal matter all over himself. Uh, he was ordered to take a bath. He was escorted. Ordered to take a bath? He was, the doctor had ordered him to be given a bath ah. for sanitation. He yeah. was taken to the infirmary, and during the bath process, he was burnt. What had begun as a parent's psychological torment became physical in the case of Von Dorch. They picked me up and placed me in the bath, yes. I was trying to get up. I started hollering, you know what I'm saying, and trying to get out of the bath. And they just put me in it. Pushed my legs down and put me in it. You could smell my skin burning. I was cooking. Yes. It's the same way you broil or cook food and you could smell it. Yes, you could smell me. Smell my skin burn, yes, sir. According to sworn testimony from a nurse in the infirmary area, she overheard one of the guards involved say, quote, he was going to be a white boy when they got through. These photos were taken by a staff member who thought that possibly a crime had been committed when Dorch was burned in the infirmary. My legs were as white as yours, yeah. All the skin was off, all my skin came off, I was white. Despite the fact that Dorch's skin had been scrubbed away and he had third degree burns, Pelican Bay's doctors failed to give him any anesthetic for half an hour or more, and the chief doctor even argued that Dorch had not, in fact, been burned. But Dorch went into shock, nearly died, and was rushed to the hospital where he later underwent skin grafts. How do we justify this? What am I locked up for, a petty thief? I mean, do we put thieves on, on death row? We torture them? The judge said the penalty for crime is to do your time. He says 16 months. I didn't read the fine print where he says, okay, let's cook him, torture him, maim him. I mean, come on. Let's be realistic here. Did I deserve that? Fellow by the name of Von Dorch. You know him? I know of him. You know what happened to him at Pelican Bay? Yes, I do. What happened? He was put into a bath uh, uh, to remove fecal matter that was on his body. The water was intense and too hot. It scalded Mr. Dorch. It scrubbed was, him. Scrubbed him. It was total inappropriate behavior by staff. What we, happened? We fired that staff member. What about the doctors and the uh, other people involved? Uh, there were other correctional officers involved. Mm -hmm. We did not find them culpable in the investigation. Dr. Armand Stard is a professor of medicine at the University of Wisconsin Medical School. His specialty is prison health care. He reviewed the Dorch case. Director Gomez says it, he agrees it was a tragic incident. The medical technician was at fault. They fired him. That satisfy you? No. Because? There is, is no mechanism in place to prevent that from happening again. Dr. Start has evaluated the health services in nearly 100 prisons and jails in 30 states. And in fact, two years ago, he served as an expert witness for the California Department of Corrections in another lawsuit. How bad is Pelican Bay? Pelican Bay is near the bottom of the list. But I've got to believe that you feel that what goes on at Pelican Bay is both cruel and inhuman. Yes, I do. Is there a worse prison in the United States in your estimation for that kind of thing? Frankly, I haven't seen one. Dr. Start is now scheduled to testify for the inmates in the Pelican Bay civil rights trial about the overall quality of health care at the prison. Most prison officials, state officials, believe it's their responsibility to provide care and custody. Pelican Bay has forgotten care. Pelican Bay, and that's a success story about isolating predators and victimizers away from regular inmates who want to program and go back into society.
If Pelican Bay is a success story and makes the California prison system safer for criminals and correctional officers, what about society on the outside? Does Pelican Bay make society safer? Inmates, some actively psychotic, are regularly paroled directly from Pelican Bay's shoe to the street with no training, no counseling, no job, and in many cases, nowhere to go. How does society benefit? How does it lead to public safety? It's, it's safe for our staff to work here. It's safe for the inmates incarcerated here. Yeah, but, we... but beyond here. I can't answer your question. It's beyond us. Is it OK to drive people crazy in an effort to decrease violence in your prison system? Is it OK to release people to the street from Pelican Bay Shoe who are far crazier and far more violent than they were when they came into the prison system? I don't think those things are OK. James Gomez, head of California's Department of Corrections, says he is, quote, required by law to release inmates once their sentence is served, whether or not they're in the shoe. And what about driving inmates inside, inside the shoe? According to Gomez, quote, the CDC knows of no individual without a prior mental disorder who developed a mental disorder attributable to placement in a security housing unit. This week, the question of whether Pelican Bay constitutes cruel and unusual punishment will come before a federal court in San Francisco as the inmates' lawsuit goes to trial.